um, I wanted to look at this question that was from exercise 7e from pure year one. And it wanted us to prove that all cube numbers are either a multiple of nine or one more or one less than a multiple of nine. So it wants us to prove that all cube numbers are either a multiple of nine, one more, or one less than a multiple of nine. Now, if you had to think to yourself out of the different options of things this could be, it's either going to be proof by deduction or proof by exhaustion. Which of those two things do you feel like it's likely to be? Exhaustion. It's going to be exhaustion. Now, previously, when we were trying to prove things for all numbers, what we did last time is we split them into the two categories of even and odd. If we could prove it for even and we could prove it for odd, then we would prove it for all of the numbers that exist here. But I'm just going to demonstrate why this isn't going to work. Because if it was an even number, say 2n, if we cubed it, we would get 8n cubed. And 8n cubed is going to tell me nothing about the 9 times table. It's only going to tell me about the 8 times table. And again, if I did it with an odd number of 2n plus 1 cubed, when you do, do binomial on this, you get 8n cubed plus 3 times 4 plus 12n squared plus 6n plus 1. And again, this isn't going to tell you anything about the 9 times table. So for this particular question, we are going to break all numbers down into something different. And there's a bit of a clue in the question because they have said multiple of nine, or one more, or one less. They have said that it could be one of three different things, which means that instead of breaking the numbers down into these two situations, I'm going to break the numbers down into three situations. And the three situations that I'm going to break them down into are multiples of three, one more than a multiple of three, And either one less or, or two more. I don't really mind which one we do. I'm probably going to do one less than a multiple of three. So it is proof by exhaustion. We're going to exhaust all of the options here by looking at all of these different things. So for example, if you think of the number seven, seven would be one more than a multiple of three. Uh, what would be an example of one less than a multiple of three? Eight and then multiples of three are obviously pretty obvious. So that covers all of the numbers. Okay, and we're going to try and write these in their algebraic one. So the multiples of three are going to be three n. One more than a multiple of three is going to be three n plus one, and one less than a multiple of three is going to be three n minus one. So what I would actually do to start this problem formally is I would say consider the multiples of three. No, because I, I don't want to consider, I'm going to be considering the multiples of 3 for n, and I'm going to then cube them and then compare it to the multiples. If I did it with the multiples of 9 for a proof by exhaustion, I would have to do multiple of 9, 1 more than a multiple of 9, 2 more than a multiple of 9, 3 more than a multiple of 9, four, and I just have to keep going. But the reason we think it's going to work with 3 is because when you do something with 3 cubed, instead of having stuff to do with 8, you're probably going to have something to do with 9, which is going to help. So I'm going to consider the multiples of 3, i.e. 3n, where n is an integer. And it's really boring having to keep writing these things over and over again, but we do write them. So then the multiples of 3 cubed would be 27n cubed, which is 9 times 3n cubed, hence a multiple of 9. So that's where the multiple of 9 bits is coming from. Then we will consider numbers that are 1 more than a multiple of 3, i.e. 3n plus 1. Again, n should be an integer, but I'm going to save a bit of time here from having to write that. So we're going to do 3n plus 1 cubed. So that is going to be 3n all cubed plus 3 times 3n squared. This is just doing the binomial here. Plus 3 times 3n plus 1. Because the binomial coefficients for a cubic is 1, 3, 3, 1. And I've got 3n cubed, 3n squared, 3n. And obviously the 1 you don't need to worry about. So you get 27n cubed 
plus 3 times uh, 3 squared is 27n squared plus 9n plus 1. And so when you factorize by 9 here, you get 3n cubed plus 3n squared. That's not right, is it? Yes, it is. Plus n plus 1. You get the plus one then hanging out at the end. So you say, hence, one more than a multiple of nine. Didn't think you were doing an essay subject? Well, you are. All this writing down. And then we're going to consider numbers one less than a multiple of three, i.e., 3n minus 1, and technically we should say where n is an integer, but they would let you get away with this in the exam. So I'm going to do the same process. I'm going to cube that number, and it's going to be the same as this, apart from what will happen. It's going to flip some of them. So the first one would be positive, then it would be negative, then positive, then negative. So it's going to be 27n cubed minus 27n squared plus 9n minus 1. And when you factorize that, you're going to get 3n cubed minus 3n squared plus n minus 1, the extra minus 1 at the end. And so we say, hence, 1 less than a multiple of 9. So I'm just going to say, so the statement is true because I don't really fancy writing out <laughs> that because it is true for multiples of three, one more than a multiple of three and one less than a multiple of three, that it is either a multiple of nine, one more than a multiple of nine or one less than a multiple of nine. The statement is true. I just kind of want to leave it and just say, so the statement is true. Okay. Now I looked at this question and I said to myself, oh gosh, it's definitely a proof by exhaustion. I wasn't sure how to do it. And then I thought to myself, how would I explain this to you guys as students? How would I think that I would detect that it was going to be splitting it into these three bits? And I just want to go back to what I'd written at the top about how I knew I was going to have to split it in three things. Because if I split it in two things, I would only ever have two of these things proven. And clearly, I wanted three different things as my criteria here. And if I split it into two things, I was only ever going to have stuff to do with eights or even numbers. I was never going to find out anything to do with cube numbers. So the trick of splitting it into these three things here still falls in line with what we said with proof by exhaustion. It covers all of the numbers, and it just comes up with things to do with nine that helps us. So I wanted to put this one in from the homework because it just reminds us proof by exhaustion does not just mean even and odd. It can mean variations on that. I think if this question came up in the exam, I think it would be very poorly answered because I don't think people would be aware of that. That's why it's good to look at some of these ones that we've got, okay?